Well, it's time for another episode about biological weapons and biological threats. And this one's going to be about the one that's most likely to wipe humans off the face of the earth. And it's not that exciting, I'm afraid to tell you, it's flu. But there has been lots of attempts previously to weaponize flu, or weaponize certain strains of the flu. And basically, when it comes to flu, you get different strains of it. Some of the strains are far more deadly to humans than other strains. Some strains can be particularly deadly to certain types of animals. So, what ends up happening is that scientists, obviously in various countries working on biological weapons programs, have attempted to weaponize flu and sort of try and discover strains of flu that are more efficient than others at um, infecting and killing. So, as much as we have all these other horrible biological weapons like anthrax and smallpox and all things like this, the most dangerous in sort of a conventional sense really is the flu. Now, if you look at history and look at some of the worst flu epidemics in history, if you get a particularly nasty strain of flu, it can, you know, wipe out lots and lots of people. The funny statistic, and I've spoken about this before, is what was known as the Spanish flu in Europe and America during the sort of about 1917-1918, um, that killed more people than World War I combined. So if you took all the nations in World War I and all their casualties, that flu killed more people than World War I, which is sort of insane, and it did in a short period of time as well. So flu itself is a really kind of, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming most people have had the flu or at least had very bad colds, so they know what flu is like. But when you catch a regular strain of flu, you feel very tired, you don't have any energy to do anything. Good analogies people have said, which I'd mostly agree with, is that if you're feeling really bad, you know, and bedridden with the flu or whatever, and then there's, um, you know, some free money laying on the ground, unless it was a big amount of money, you probably wouldn't want to actually be bothered to go and pick it up. Whereas normally, you know, if you saw a couple of quid on the floor, you'd go, yeah, I'd definitely take that, but... So that's a good way of thinking of, you know, just regular flu, is it's like a very bad cold, but you have very little energy to actually do anything. So sore throat, you know, sneezing, headaches, um, main thing is tiredness and almost weakness with the flu, which you don't get so much of a cold. With a, with a cold you might feel quite fed up, but with the flu, if you've, as I said, not had it, you'll feel definitely very, um, I can't be bothered to do anything. It's not exactly depression or anything like that, but it's... You know, you're, you literally feel like your energy is being sapped, as well as having all the symptoms of very bad cold. So once you then get flu symptoms where, um, obviously, certain strains of flus are able to kill you, it becomes a lot more serious. As far as I'm aware, with flu, when it becomes fatal, it's normally because it leads to other complications like pneumonia and things like that from having the regular flu. Um, but obviously, if it makes you very weak and saps all your energy and you're not the healthiest person, I imagine that can probably be what gets you as well. So... Flu obviously spreads through um, sneezing, um, it's an airborne disease, however there's been recent studies that have suggested that flu would actually spread even if you're not coughing and sneezing, but if you, for example, had flu and you're breathing in and out and you're in close proximity to other people, you're going to spread it to them. So in a nightmare scenario, flu would be a very hard disease to contain because of how easily it spreads. We've seen in recent years that now and again you'll have a particularly nasty flu strain that might kill three or four times as many people as expected, but it's still not insane numbers, but it's always quite interesting when you get things like Ebola that sound really scary. Um, yeah, things like that, apart from some of the nations where they hit in Africa and do a lot of damage, on the global scale they do less damage than you know a regular strain of flu does every year. So how can you actually protect yourself if um, <clears throat> this sort of nightmare scenario happens? Well, I think just avoid all contact with people if there was known to be a super deadly strain of flu. Obviously, don't bother going into work if, um, you know, you might catch something that will kill you. Um, <clears throat> just wait it out in your house with canned food and everything else and don't meet other people. Wipe down your hands and surfaces constantly. If you're going to decide to do it, obviously put on a particulate respirator and <clears throat> wear that for extended periods, uh, especially if you're getting closer to other people because that will prevent you inhaling their germs. If you've got sort of a HEPA type filter thing that you can be running, obviously run that because then more of the microbes are more likely to be sucked into that rather than going into the air you're breathing. But flu is renowned for being very hard to not get if it's going around. You might be lucky and be immune to a particular strain. You can also get flu jabs or injections that are meant to immunise you, but the problem is of those is they can only immunise you against strains of flu they've already essentially made the vaccine for. 
So if you have the vaccine and it's another strain of flu going around, the vaccine does nothing to help you. Whenever I've had flu vaccines as well, they've actually often left me feeling a bit ill for a day or two anyway. I know with a lot of vaccines there are side effects, but that's just something else to bear in mind, that if the vaccine is not going to be particularly good um, at preventing you getting a strain of flu, or make yourself feel worse and potentially more vulnerable to the flu by getting the injection. That's all, I'm not an anti-vaccine person by any means, obviously I think vaccines against lots of diseases that we can stop with vaccines is a very good thing. I'm not one of those sort of conspiracy theorists regarding vaccines, but I'm saying with flu vaccines it's not a proper vaccine that will work against lots of strains of flu. So, yeah, that's the scary thought with flu at least, that you've got something that's a very sort of virulent disease anyway. Um, but then you've got essentially this virus that can um, be weaponized or, you know, further research, like we were saying with chimera viruses, chimera viruses, that, you know, there is people who would weaponize these. They probably don't need all that, you know, good scientific equipment anyway. There was a US biological program done, I think, in the late 90s, early 2000s, where the US government basically commissioned lots of labs to buy over-the-counter kind of lab equipment or things you could buy with a very basic sort of chemist-type license. And they found those people were able to manufacture anthrax in the test environment. So, something to consider that, you know, non-state programs could probably try and do this at some point as well. But as said... This is something that I wouldn't worry about until it actually happens, and that's when you, um, you know, just need to rely on your prepping stocks and hope for the best. Obviously, if you live in, a, like with all these diseases, if you live in a very rural, out-of-the-way area, you're probably going to be a lot safer than if you're in a big city.